Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, and Shinrin Yoko bringing you a grand solar minimum update Thursday, March 10th, 4 p.m. Mountain Time, 2022. The models are in and they're showing snow. And the big story is snow, a nor'easter, and we're going to get to that. But before we get there, bitter cold. Keep calm. It's boom time. Did someone say bitter cold? Well, we did, and it's coming. Well, it already arrived. Sub-zero wind chills Thursday morning. Much warmer Sunday. Another cold, bright day Thursday, and it is looking quite chilly. Let's take a look here. Uh, some of the temperatures for Friday, March 11th. Boom. 16 in Minneapolis. March 12th, 4 degrees in Des Moines, minus 1. It's looking like very cold in... International Falls, minus 15, minus 12 in Grand Fork. So cold temperatures coming through the weekend. And then a warm-up. Schools are closed Thursday due to extreme weather and cold. Take a look at that. And the dynamic storm could bring up to a foot of snow and strong winds to upstate New York. Snow forecast, how much snow is expected to hit Cincinnati? Well, stay tuned. We have the models. And a winter storm to bring heavy rain and snow to Maine. It's insane. And the powder continues for the West. Snow forecast in T-minus now. Here we are at the GFS model. Hello. And let's take a look and walk it through day by day. Here's your Friday. Uh, the current system that it's currently snowing outside. It's a cold and snowy, miserable day. You can see that system in the four corners is slowly going to make its way south as... The nor'easter is budding across the Midwest. That snow is going to move down to Alamogordo, heads up, Ransom. And then by Saturday morning, afternoon, it's really going to pick up in Kentucky, Tennessee area, and move right up through central Pennsylvania there, upstate New York. There's your Sunday, fun day. And then the West, another system moving into the West. And the pattern looks quite wet for the West. Really good news. Much needed snow coming all the way to the end of March. And that is the snow pattern. Developing winter storm and severe weather threats into the weekend. A developing winter storm will bring snow, wind, and severe weather hazards across the eastern two-thirds of the country the rest of the week and the start of the weekend. Take a look at this. 25 states or so with winter storm watches and warnings all the way from the four corners all the way up to the tip of Maine. It's insane. As the storm moves to the eastern seaboard Saturday, unseasonably cold air will filter from the plains across the east with strong winds. The southern Rockies and plains remain dry with elevated fire weather concerns. So heads up. And let's take a quick trip over to Europe and see what the GFS model is showing there. It's showing that you're, well, you guys in the UK could still are not out of the winter woods yet. Here's a storm in about 10 days, Tuesday, March 22nd, Ireland, Scotland. And the UK could be, well, get, picking up some of the global warming goodness. Hey, hey. So just a heads up for the Europeans watching the show. Seismic update. No quakes and no good news. All is quiet on the Western Front. Worldwide volcano news update. Some interesting updates uh, coming from Volcano Discovery. Pavlov Volcano, Alaska Peninsula. Spatter cone has formed there. And you can even see it glowing there. And at Davidoff of all volcanoes in the Aleutians. Volcanic seismic unrest continues, and I believe they have raised the alert level there, as well as Kirishima volcano in Japan, alert level raised to two. Not much more going on there. Space weather news update. We are, we just came out of a long, we're still in a long duration sea flare at C2.3. It's been lasting for hours. And... We are, in fact, in geomagnetic instability in the last three hours here at KP4. Al Gore's a bore. Shut up, Al. Get in your hole. And this sunspot, this active region coming around the northern limb here uh, is quite interesting and quite active, and we're going to keep a close eye on that. That's the last 24 hours of our sun. And here is that spot in question where you can see multiple positives leading multiple negatives. A pretty significant spot there. So we'll keep a close eye on that. Now, the massive meteor crater discovered beneath Greenland's ice about a year ago is much older than thought. And many people were screaming at me about the last video I did about an impact. 
and why I didn't include uh, the Hiawatha Crater. Well, the Hiawatha Crater is exceptionally well preserved despite the glacier ice being incredibly effective at erosion. Its date-fueled talk that the meteorite might have hit as recently as 13,000 years ago. However, two separate groups went out and dated this baby, and they came to the conclusion it's about 58 million years old. And there's a video, so take a look. Moat area of northwest Greenland. An international team of scientists has made a stunning discovery buried beneath nearly a kilometer of ice. It's an impact crater, 300 meters deep, 31 kilometers wide, much bigger than Washington, D.C., even bigger than Paris, and it's probably one of the youngest large impact craters on Earth. The rel <laughs> No, in fact, it is not. Uh, the two teams determined using uh, very specific, specific types of dating. Both teams pointed to a date about 58 million years old. Now, they, uh, the grains of sand were heated with a laser, and the researchers measured the release of argon gas produced from the decay. Um, and that's the type of radioactive isotope of potassium known as K40. Now, the half-life of K40 is exceptionally long, which makes it ideal for dating Deep time geologic events like the age of Hiawatha asteroid, according to the team. So, not a Younger Dryas crater, but there are many more Younger Dryas impacts, so no need to worry about that. Now, the other day, something happened in the uh, finance realms, and this article doesn't want to load here. So, we'll just get rid of it. But what happened is pretty significant. The price of nickel rose to $100,000 a ton or something like that. Yeah, nickel spiked to $100,000 per metric ton on the Lon London Metal Exchange earlier in the week before trading was halted. The metal had traded about $25,000 a ton before the run-up. Now, if you have a nickel in your pocket, it's not worth $0.05. Cents. Currently, it's worth $0.16. Cents. This is unprecedented. So to you can quadruple your money just by... Exchanging it all the nickels, melting it down, and selling it back uh, onto the market. That's amazing. At $100,000 a ton, a nickel is now worth $0.16 cents in metal or melt value, Barron's estimates. Each nickel weighs 5 grams approximately or so and contains 1.25 grams of nickel and 3.75 grams of copper. At 100000 a ton, there is 12.5 cents of nickel in a nickel currently and 3.5 cents of copper. Absolutely mind-blowing. And I've got huge amounts of change in here, so that's awesome. Who knew I had precious metal in my nickels? So that is mind-blowing. And that is bad news for the, our future. That means that the economy is about to tank for years. One of the biggest recessions you'll have ever lived through is starting soon. And why does the U.S. need oil from other countries? Well, because we... Because of the Green New Deal and the agenda of this government. It's not about energy independence. It's about destroying the planet for renewable resources, which are not renewable. Now, something cool here. A hiker captures once-in-a-lifetime photo of wildlife at Brazos Bend State Park just the other day in Texas. This is awesome. That's an unfortunate snake. Elsie Kitchens captured the once-in-a-lifetime shot of the American bittern eating a red-bellied mud snake at Brazos State Park on Saturday, March 5th. Awesome little snake there. And a couple of awesome uh, scientific tidbits to finish up with. The first, a hero of mine, Ernest Shackleton's endurance ship was found in Antarctica after 107 years. If you haven't heard, it is intact and it's in about a thousand feet of water. 3,008 meters or actually 9,842 feet deep in the Weddell Sea. Holy macaroni. And this is probably copyright, but come check out the video. They're going to do a whole, I'm sure, documentary on the endurance. And you can see the endurance here. 
absolutely fascinating. You can see the picture. I mean, it's like it was from yesterday. Take a look at some of these. Let us take a look at some of these pictures of Ernest Shackleton's endurance in 10,000 feet of water. And that's not it, but that's probably one of the ships that uh, located this fantastic find. So links below. Massive bubbles at the center of the Milky Way caused by super, no, they weren't, massive black hole. No, they're not. And we've had, but they're, they are super amazing. Now, the first thing that came to mind when I saw this is Squatter Man. Right there. What say you? And if you know anything about plasma petroglyphs and some of the work we do here at the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, well, and if you don't, let's bring you up to speed. This is the paper that made it all possible. Characteristics for the occurrence of a high current Z pinch auroras as recorded in antiquity. Anthony L. Pratt. And this is the full color, full paper. We're going to leave you links below that will explain what we're talking about as far as petroglyphs and plasma petroglyphs, plasma discharge, and why we think that's what we're looking at in a lot of these glyphs worldwide. And also a second paper here, searching for rock art evidence for an ancient super aurora by Martinus Anthony van den Sluis and Anthony Peratt. This is another awesome 10-page article to bring you up to speed and the reason we're getting you up to speed is because we're about to have an event on the squatter man and plasma petroglyphs where we'll have private petroglyph tours available and we will have an entire day and symposium of talks and discussions with some of those that have been working for years in the field on the topic so read the paper get up to speed and join us at the plasma petroglyph event of a lifetime. That's boom to knowledge. Proper pride planning prevents piss poor performance. We love each and every one of you. Thanks to our Patreons, our patrons. The people that share this video, one-time donors, each and every one of you. You're a hero. Mm -hmm.